just before the electricity and the phones went out, um, my mother was killed. They were coming back after leaving um, some of these wounded people at the hospital and they were going back to um, the emergency hospital which was sort of in the center of the city and uh, they just got fired on. I'm still not quite clear on what happened um, that night because I heard bits and pieces from all, all, all kinds of people. Um, but I know my mom was at the back of the ambulance and then she was shot through the liver. And the um, driver remembers hearing her say I'm wounded, but then after that he doesn't remember anything. Uh, and I think she bled to death in about 10 minutes. I don't think, um, I don't think she made it alive back to um, the hospital. And you know, people just kept dying, you're waiting your turn. Um, there was no water, um, there was no running water anymore, they cut that off as well. Uh, so there was a bore water in front of one house and people would be queuing up there and with the buckets and you know to get some water home and um, they um, dropped the shell they basically knew where these queues were and uh, I think about 20 people got killed um, a girl that was standing she was basically first in the line she um, she got blown apart by the shell and um, her head basically flew all the way and, and landed in um, my neighbor above, who lived in an apartment above ours in his living room. And I remember I uh, we used to walk through the building, like through the front entrance and the back entrance, because you would try to stay away from the clear space as much as you possibly could when you were moving. And I remember I was, we decided to basically leave our building and move further into the suburb. Um, and as I sort of walked out, I just saw the wall of, of the first floor apartment of the neighboring building just come basically out along with the furniture just behind it like the big wardrobe and it just came crashing down and a tank just fired basically into the building um, right at the back um, and we just started moving gradually bit by bit um, and I remember seeing this stream of people women children um, crying and making the way from running, basically making the way from the neighboring suburb into our suburb. So everybody was sort of moving inwards and inwards. Um, and we moved in, I don't know, maybe 200 meters, 300 meters in sort of next row of buildings. Um, and it was already just before the night. And the way they would do it is they would, um, they would move in into the sort of row of buildings and then they would, um, put snipers and then they would just cut all the cut all the sort of streets so nobody could walk with the sniper fire and then the tanks would just roll in. And um, it was actually one of our neighbors who basically said, look, what we have to do is we have to torch the buildings. We just have to set fire to everything. And they did. They um, they basically lit up the front row of buildings. People lit up their own apartments, and you know, while the buildings were burning, they couldn't get in. They couldn't actually get in there, um, and um, that worked. That actually worked. Um, it held them off all the night. I was wounded on that day. Um, I was. It wasn't. It was nothing major. Uh, I just got hit by shrapnel. Uh, twice, once in my back and once in my leg. It was just a mortar shell or something similar that landed nearby. And we we stayed overnight in an apartment, somebody's apartment, sort of further inside the suburb. And um, I woke up next morning to this rumbling sound. Um, I looked through the window, and the window was looking at the intersection, and I saw a tank rolling through. And um, I thought, well, this is it. But actually it wasn't. Um, it was actually a Bosnian tank, which I didn't even know existed. But um, what basically happened, um, and we didn't know that because we were cut off from the city, um, whatever remained of police force and um, you know probably volunteers that had some weapons, 
they um, they actually managed to lay siege and, and capture a couple of um, barracks, so the Federal Army barracks still in the city, and they managed to capture some heavy weaponry and, and even a couple of tanks. Um, and as all that was happening, um, and we were not aware of that, they actually made a, a break from the city into the suburb and, and basically lifted the blockade, opened up the suburb. They took a hill. Um, so the Bosnian forces took a hill that was separating um, city and, and the suburb where I lived overnight. And um, they actually sent whatever forces they had into the suburb. Um, and um, I don't think Serbs really expected that to happen because they, yeah, they, they had only light resistance. It was just way too easy for them. Um, and there was still some fighting going on that day. That tank that I saw that morning was uh, taken out by a Serb tank around you know, 12 o'clock that afternoon. Everybody, I uh, know the whole tank crew was killed. Um, but a significant number of fighters actually came into the suburb and, and they basically stopped it. Um, we were really saved.